I think there's something pretty serious that goes on with us photographers, something upstairs that we just can't wrap our head around. We think that we're only as good as our last photo. Either we're gold or we're trash. Either we're seriously questioning our life choices or you know, we're camera gods and this is the best photo that we ever took. Sometimes you work really hard. You have this great idea for a photo. You set everything up, you take the picture, everything you work to make it perfect, and in the end, it just looks like crap. It's like you forgot how to take a picture or something. It's depressing, you get down on yourself, but the truth is, is not, not every photo has to be or is destined to be that great masterpiece. You don't have to feel like you constantly have to make the greatest photo you ever took. My wife used to make fun of me, she still does, but when we shot together and I got something good, I would immediately run over to her, show her the back of my camera, the LCD screen, and be like, this is the greatest photo I ever took. But you know, if that didn't happen, I would get depressed, especially if it had been a long time since I got that greatest photo rush. But as I grew as a photographer, I, I kind of wisened up to it, well, maybe a little bit, and I started to realize that not every photo has to be the greatest photo or image or video ever. And every artist has that portfolio of suck. And that's okay, we all have one. We probably try to hide ours away so no one will see it, so no one will notice just how bad we are, but that portfolio of suck is really important. It helps us grow as an artist. I'm not saying that you should go show it off to the world, but at the same time, I guess don't be too afraid of your own suckiness. I just think that us photographers, we try really hard to skip over this really important step because it makes us feel uncomfortable. But it always leads to better images. And we get a little bit of this when we first start out. But once we become better photographers, it kind of fades away. And if it does come our way, we tend to ignore it or we get offended. And that's critique. So I wanna share with you five tips today on how I can continuously improve as a photographer. Watch until the end because these are probably the five most important tips in photography. Tip number one, surround yourself with people that will give you honest feedback. They're not gonna pat you on the back every time. They're not gonna blow smoke. They're gonna be real with you. When I was a photography teacher at college, in my last lecture, right before they graduated, I used to tell my students, kind of jokingly, that this would be the last time that anyone was truly honest with them. Now, they didn't really get it. They'd kind of roll their eyes and chuckle a bit, but what I was talking about was critique. What I meant was this would be the last time that they're completely surrounded by a bunch of other artists that would critique their work solely so they could improve as photographers, as image makers. Your mother, your friends, your family, maybe even your coworkers, they're always gonna love your work. Rarely are you gonna get a truly honest critique. I mean, you might have some tough mothers out there, but more than likely, they're gonna love everything you do. Or most likely, they don't know how you can improve. They might have something to say, but they can't articulate it or convey it to you. It looks off to them, but because they don't have that language, you know, they say nothing. Instead, they say things like, oh wow, awesome. It looks really cool. Great light. Hmm, you must have a really expensive camera. Tip number two, fast growth turns into slow growth. In the beginning, you get better really quickly because you're surrounded by critique and you're more open to people's suggestions. As you get better, that growth slows. You need to recreate that environment that you had when you first started out. When I was brand new, just learning the camera, there was critique flying around. It was coming out of everywhere. Oh, look over there. There's another person with an opinion about my work. But that's okay because everyone is trying to get better at that point when you're first starting out. At that point, you're more open to suggestions to improve your work. I know for me, every little bit helped. At the start, the errors in my photography were so blatantly visible. Maybe my images were completely oof, out of focus, or way blown out, or my shutter speed was just way too low and I had camera shake. But then I improved and my critique turned to composition and story. That's one reason that as you start out, the growth is so quick, it's so rapid, but as you become a better photographer, that growth kind of teeters off, it kind of slows down. And I think a big part of that is because the amount of critique coming into you also slows as well. Tip number three, grow a thick skin. You need to be open to criticism of your own work. Take the view that everyone has something important to say. They may not. But if you're closed off, you might miss out on some valuable insight. There's a two-part problem as we become better photographers. First 
is ego, and the second is knowledge. Every photographer, myself included, has an ego problem. Our work is our baby, and we'll defend that work like a mother bear, even at the slightest hint of critique. Or the person offering the critique has a jealousy problem, and they're lobbing grenades one after the other on purpose, which is pretty rare, but it happens. Either way though, to survive, you have to have a pretty thick skin. The other is a knowledge problem, which goes back to what I was saying before. They feel like something is off, but they just don't know what it is. They don't know how to express it. They don't want to offend you, but it sucks, and they just don't know why. Just spilled coffee on myself. Tip number four, learn how to discuss photography. To get past the photographer's massive ego, it helps to learn a little bit about how to critique a photo in a constructive way. Try the hamburger method. One top bun of good, the meat of the criticism, followed up with the bottom bun of good. It makes the hamburger. Start off with something that you like about the image. Maybe it's the color choice or the composition or the light. This all will help soften the blow when it comes time for the critique. When you are critiquing, try to stick to the motivation behind the photo. Who are they trying to reach? Their audience, you know, where will the final image be placed and does the composition match up with that? What was the original intention or the story behind the image that the photographer was trying to convey? And does the final image match that? All of this helps, you know, get away from the technical, which most likely the photographer would figure out on their own anyways. And then follow all of this up with another bun of good. It's always good to motivate if you wanna see positive change in them and yourself as well. As I grew and became a better photographer, the errors in my photography and my photography business became less blatant and harder to spot. And the amount of people that I know or, or meet who are actually knowledgeable in my genre or who can give me the time of day to actually give me some critique is very small. However, you need to find that person or, or that group. Critique is an extremely valuable tool to have with you throughout your photography career. Yes, it'll help you with your technical, but you know, it'll do more than that. Not just your composition or your creative or your story or your ideas, but your workflow and your business. Tip number five, wrap up sessions. Whenever a photography shoot is complete, follow it with a wrap up session. Critique doesn't end when you become pro and it doesn't always have to be about photography. A lot of times my shoots will be multi-day productions. I have this practice with my producer slash assistant Darren, who's also a photographer and comes with me on all of my shoots. The thing is, is at the end of each day, we'll do a wrap up session. We'll grab the photos, we'll grab the videos, we'll sit down with the tablet and do a critique of each one. We'll talk about the technical side, the creative, the camera angle, focus, whatever it is, and we'll try to incorporate that into the following day. We'll also talk about the shoot in general, any hiccups that we had and if we can resolve those. We'll talk about the communication that we had with the clients and you know if there's something that we can improve on. And if there is, can we do it immediately or is it something that we have to work on? But these wrap up sessions are probably one of the most important things that we do because it provides me, the artist, invaluable critique and perspective on how I can improve. I try to do this for everything that I create, even if it's something that I'm just working on for myself. I also find it really helpful to show my work to people that have nothing to do with photography. They have no training at all. They'll come up with opinions and insights that you know I would never think of. That's one of the reasons why big budget TV and movies will spend so much money on focus groups. So this is what I was working on today. I've added a bit more in Photoshop, a slight horizon right here, and I've increased the spotlight effect behind the bottle and the drink. It was looking a little bit flat, so I'm using these two things to add a bit more depth to the image. But I'm pretty happy with it overall. I picked up that transparent acrylic tray a few weeks ago and I've kind of been dying to do this, you know, interesting camera angle ever since. But back on the topic of critique, I know it sounds cliche, but really just try to keep an open mind. Try to remove yourself from the fog that is the creative process. I know myself, I get distracted when I'm shooting and I get too much tunnel vision, I get laser focused, and I forget to be objective about my own work. I guess critique or you know, having that ability to be objective towards your own work is probably one of the greatest tips in photography. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but there's a whole band right downstairs. There's a xylophone, I hear a saxophone, there's the drums. It's super distracting. This is like the thousandth time that I've tried to do this outro. I don't know what is going on outside. I hope you like this video. 
if you did, if you learned something, give it a like, subscribe, share it around, drop some comments down below, let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Man, I need some more coffee.